Hey, Red Dawn Raider here, and welcome back to Xenonauts 2 Early Access Milestone 3. As today, we're taking on what I believe may very well be the most dangerous threat we've faced thus far, our very first destroyer. So, with that in mind, uh, I have tried to load us up with our most versatile troops, not necessarily the highest ranking, but the ones with the highest combination of time units and strength, so that they can adapt more quickly to changing circumstances. And I have uh, made sure to pack everyone to the gills with extra ammo, explosives. Let's just hope it's enough. To those who are about to die, etc., etc., an alien spacecraft has landed in this region. Eliminating the crew will allow us to capture the intact vessel and strip it for resources. Eliminate hostile units or capture UFO and hold for three turns. You know what, we might actually go for that latter one. Uh, as vessel has not crashed, none of the crew have died. Harder battle, greater rewards. And immediate enemy in sight. Some kind of weird little floaty octopus robot. Huh. Okay, uh, we're tucked into the corner. That implies the crash site is far north. We've seen this map. This was, um, yeah, this is the one we were just on with the recent scout ship crash. This is where Daryl Deegs bit it, only uh, now it's daytime. So that's a slight advantage to us. Um, might be able to take that thing down from here. Need to check sides too, but... I have no idea what that thing actually does, so... Yeah, we gotta go for it. no telling what that thing does. Might just be a scout bot, might be some sort of floating bomb that flies into us and explodes. Just no real way of knowing until until we actually see it in action. Or possibly get one back to the lab. Let's clear this blind alley here. Okay, okay, looks good. Though we might still have someone lurking just inside those doors, but, you know, if that happens, we're just out of luck. Nice tag. First Blood McClough. How about you, Henrik? Oh. Okay, yeah, I, uh... I'm gonna go with floating bombs. We'll have to be very wary of those things, take them down from range. Corner clear. And another floating bomb, but a good ways out, so... Hopefully we'll have ample time to drop it. Might have enemies in this one little blind spot to our left, but again, if that's the case, we're just out of luck. Also have this little spot in center. Just hang tight, key points banked. Fingers crossed. So now we know the noises. These things make the cartoony anti-grav sound. Let's go for a stun. Ah. 
actually a very small map. Which works both for and against us, depending on how many enemies there are. Um, let's just take this thing down. If Punny had landed that first shot, we might have committed to the stun, but that's definitely not happening now. Also, we know these things explode, so trying to stun them might not be the best idea. Alright, we'll just blow it. Inappropriate. Ooh, double blast, too. That is something we might be able to use to our advantage in the future. Clear the building real quick. And we've got bomb bots. Take it out. Ah, shoot. Oh, gosh. Okay, so not just bomb bots, but also like floating machine gun platforms. Good to know. You you doing okay, random? Ah, you're fine. Though you are suppressed. LOS established. Rook. So yeah, that's our big new thing with these destroyers, I guess. These swarms of floaty, exploding machine gun bots. We'll see if we can capture one, but that'll have to be stun guns only. We definitely don't want to melee these things. Hold. We heard grain sounds. There's another field far side of this building. No hovering sounds though, so it's not a bot. Push up on wall. Approach seems relatively clear. Let's bring up Clone Trooper. Let's not overextend. Let's get random patched. I mean, he's not bad off, but not like he was going to do much scouting while suppressed. And we still don't know what else is out there. We'll just keep eyes on AP Banked. No time limit, so no need to act like there's one.
And hold. Oh. We've got... Spectres? Ghosts? Hovering noises. So we've got another bot on the field. Sounds like it came out of the ship. Okay, so we've got two dime store predators just right out in the open. I'm guessing those fields make them harder to hit with range attacks. Target suppressed. What kind of hit chances are we looking at here? Oof, yeah. Yeah, that's not great. Let's get him off the fence. Oh! Targets defenestrated and uncloaked. But not by the Flash. The Flash didn't remove their cloak. The thermal damage did. Take him out. Who's got right? Canuck. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. We've still got Rook back here. The Canadian Tag Team, Canuck and Rook. Though I do hate leaving the right side uncovered. How about you, McLeod? Ah. All right, Rook, we're going to need you over here. That's not going to work. Just hold. Push up on left. Okay, okay. Destroyer in sight. Central field seems clear. Tuck and cover. Hold. hold. Cloak back up. Target pushing for the door. Also more hovering and UFO sounds. That might actually just be a Grell moving around inside the ship. I think they make the same hovering sound. Oh, shit. Uh, never mind. My bad. Sorry. Oh, got a little too cocky there. Seemed like an easy cap. Which it might still be. But we definitely paid for it. He's bleeding out, but not too bad. Canuck? Hmm. Nice. Wraith. So that cloaking field seems to lose effectiveness up close. Because he actually had a really solid hit chance there. I'm guessing it, like, doubles accuracy drop-off per space between 
between the Wraith and the Shooter. Can we take out those bushes? Not sure I see a realistic way to do that. We'll just set up for next round. Getting random patched is definite priority. We'll also keep our snipers set and ready to fire. As we saw with the first batch, those fields do not ignore Overwatch. Though obviously they do still reduce accuracy. Let's bring these guys up, start converging. Keep eyes on the ship, but start moving to regroup. Hold. Wraith is hanging back. Random patch, but still in bad shape. We're gonna have to be... Hey, there it is. Target in sight. And target suppressed. Take him out. Scrub the brush. Might as well go far side. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Uh, apparently those are flame retardant bushes, which I guess, um, sure, why not? Certainly cuts down on on uh, rolling brush fires, I guess. Yeah, they might need to fix that. That's fine, though. That's fine, though. That's fine, though. I guess just push up and hold. Eyes on the ship. Nice. And another Wraith poking his head out. Plus hover noises, which is probably a growl. Let's drop this bozo. Nice tag. Go for cap. Actually. Might be more in the blind spot. Oh, that's why the bushes didn't clear. Canuck over through one space. And field clear. All right, let's start converging. We know we've got at least two active threats. One Wraith and one floaty unit, either a Grell or a, a bomb bot. The bomb.com. Push up, keep points banked. 
don't overexpose. Just watch the angles. Quick check in here. All right, building seems clear. I feel like if there was anyone back there, they'd have ghosted us by now. Doors. But that tells us nothing. We already know there's active hostiles in there. Though only two doors might imply very few hostiles. Can we blow the door? Just want to get a peek inside without putting anyone in front of it. No, hold. We'll breach next round. Let's finish moving up. Keep the hedgerow interposed. No direct line of sight, but ready to fire on anyone who tries to push out. Please don't shoot each other. Come on, McLeod. Hold. And breach. The moment of truth. Let's see what we've got. Oh gosh. A single deliberate choke point. This is quite possibly the most dangerous part of what we're doing here, but no way around it. We gotta get in there. Bloody. Actually, no. Let's not risk a misfire. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, four wraiths, three soldiers, one non-com, plus a floater. AP likely banked. Flashbang's out. Indirect fire. Nice. What about the bomb bot? We have to take that thing out before it rushes us. Okay, okay. Hold. Go for the easy target up front. Ooh, uh, okay, uh, another soldier in back, noted. Nah. Oh, good. 
All right. Uh, whoa. Gee. We good? Okay. Uh, no hit on Tally, but she is suppressed and out of cover. I think... Yes. Um, one soldier got clipped by that barrage. Cloaking field down. Henrik? Nice. Cover tally. Shield will not hold against that many shots, though, so we need to thin them. Nice tag. Odds aren't great. Bloody up. Prep for rush. All right, Canuck, come on, bud. Come on. Yes, nice, perfect. Fall back. Perfect. And capped. Nice. Bonus. Not crazy about leaving him out in the street, but, you know, he's he's got a decent angle. All right, bloody. Um, no, 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 no. Just hold. Hold. Shield out. Clone tagged. Growl. Oh, <laughs> snap. We will absolutely take that. Um, okay. You know what? Clone's a bit worse for wear, but... He did his job. Fall back, bud. We'll get that patched. Have him bring up rear for potential... Last-minute caps. So, two wraiths. One soldier, one non-com. Plus Grell tucked in back. Focus down the wraiths. Just calculating. 70 damage on that Mentark. That's enough to potentially one-shot pretty much anyone. Except Punny. Does this guy have points banked? Target suppressed. Bunny up front to eat that Mentark blast. Clear the wraiths. Ah, shoot. That was probably worth something. Oh well. At the very least, it does make this slightly easier.
Push for cap. Nope, never mind. And McLeod's patches. Stops the bleeding, gets him back up to a safer margin. Clear Wraith. Oh shit. Crap, crap, crap. Okay, um. Crap. Forgot she was suppressed. Rook. Need you over here, bud. Come on, man. Okay. Oh. We good? <sighs> we're not... We're not good. It's... Bad. Well, I guess it was bound to happen. Hey, who knows? Maybe maybe he actually survived that. Just keep pushing. Get through this. Oh, man. I wish there was a way we could check his status mid-fight, but apparently... Apparently that's a reveal saved deliberately for the post-fight. So for now, we just fight. We fight and we potentially avenge. Man, I can't believe that thing just came right up to Punny and then just like fired right over her. That freaking fake out. Focus down the growl. Hefty armor. Really gotta upgrade those shotties. Patch tally. We've gotta bring Henrik up. You know what, let's just bonk the Mentark. Might actually be easier than killing it. Oh yeah, that was way easier. Stunning just goes straight through armor. Noted. Lock down the Wraith. Target suppressed. It's going to get off one shot, so let's hope it goes for Punny. Hold. Nice. Huh, slight pause there. Might have more in back. Focus this guy down, but hug cover. drop him.
great scientist. Interesting. And we are not done. We have at least one more on the map. Possibly right in here. So let's set up and prep for breach. Cover this door too. Let's not get sloppy, he said over the smoldering corpse of his former sniper. Cover left. And hold. Breach. Oh. Shield out, but unharmed. Wraith soldier, tucked in corner. Take him out. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that was too bold. But we're good. Come on. Please, please. Someone take this guy out. Thank you. Thank you, Henrik. Oh my goodness, that was nerve wracking. But we made it, mostly. Uh, minus potentially Brooke. Someone want to check this guy's vitals? Hey, he actually made it. Holy crap. My goodness. Okay, well, first death forestalled. But man, that that is they're definitely ramping things up. That was nerve-wracking. Okay, so the uh the bomb bots are servitors. The cloaky guys are wraiths. We actually did okay. I mean, lots of injuries, especially poor Rook, but but not not bad. Not bad, considering we went into the unknown here. Half-cocked and uh, with no real idea what we were up against. Got a whole bevy of medals, too. Though I can't help but notice we did not get medals of bravery. Which does feel like it's kind of bunk, because landing sites are way more dangerous than crash sites. But it's fine. <laughs> we made it through. UFO hull plating. Okay. That's got to be for either improved ablative armor or just a straight up new interceptor. We'll have to get that project going once we've um, finished our current one. That said, Phoenix Squad certainly seen better days. Give me a sec. I'll, uh, I'll get our roster reset here. UFO Destroyer The Destroyer is a larger and more powerful craft than the Scout, measuring slightly less than 40 meters in length. The heavy armor grants this craft significantly improved survivability, but thankfully also appears to have reduced overall speed and agility. Analysis of the Destroyer suggests it has been constructed to fulfill multiple roles. The armor is thickest on the underside of the vessel, which may signify use as ground attack craft. However, the large interior space and sizable frontal airlock imply it can also ferry troops or supplies where required. Substantially increased power generation appears to be responsible for the improved performance of this craft. For example, the engines and weapon systems are no larger than those on the Scout. Instead, the destroyer's larger reactors simply feed them more energy. The result is a vessel that poses a genuine threat to our X-25 Angel interceptors, while also being capable of carrying more crew and cargo. It thus seems safe to assume these destroyers will shortly become commonplace in our skies. Which is all the more reason for us to up our own air game. We would have actually taken that thing down when we were intercepting if we had had those accelerated autocannons. 
So we need to do up our second batch of interceptors. We need accelerated autocannons on all four. And we need to do that UFO hull research project. Build whatever that gets us. I'm assuming it's just an upgraded ablative hull item. Because if that is a full-fledged interceptor upgrade, I am going to feel very silly for blowing a million dollars on two obsolete angels. We will see. All right, let's push up the clock. Give our guys a, a chance to recover. Second batch of Warden Armor's done. Angel 3 in the works. Let's go ahead and ship two sets of Warden Armor to Exo Squad. We also have a workshop going up in uh, Excommunicado, but it's still a ways out from being finished. Plus, we'll have to hire engineers. Haven't done that yet. Oh. Okay, that's a scout with a probe escort. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, let's go for it. Might have to go manual on this one, but that'll be a good learning experience. Don't suppose we can luck out with auto? You know what? We will absolutely take it. Which gets us yet another crash site. Fantastic. And that's right next to Excommunicado, so something for Exo to do. Though, uh, sadly, yeah, that'll have to wait till next time. That, uh, <laughs> that fucking destroyer mission really took it out of me. That aside, we're like, oh yeah, we're way too deep into this recording session. I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to wrap it. Still, um, aside from the misstep with Rook, I feel like we did pretty good today. Some pretty close calls. Could have handled the destroyer shoot down better. But again, that was a valuable learning experience and really did kind of stress that uh, it's important to keep up with the air game. We need to get those upgrades going. We'll hit the pause button for now. I'll take care of uh, setup for EXO. And we will pick up here next time. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Eerie V23, Revenant, Aloise, Crow King LOR, Dragon Matrix 7, Dranketh, Egon Alter, Excelsior, Goat League, James Tremay, Kazor, Mark TMs, and Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Farum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Val and Rook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description.